My name is Jake Wheat, and I'm the lead architect at Scream Technologies. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt at any time and ask. Um, today we're going to look at it, looking at the kind of queries which are typical for analytic column in our databases. Um, there's a couple of reasons why these are interesting to run on the GPU. Uh, it's true that a lot of these sorts of queries are often I.O. bound, um, but a lot of them are also CPU bound, and this is running on clusters with a lot of expensive CPUs. Uh, and another good reason is that um, a lot of SQL queries, uh, the implementation of them fits very well with what the GPU is good at. So this talk will roughly follow, follow, follow these steps. Um, first, we will look at writing a simple query engine uh, for SQL running on a GPU. After this, we'll look at some techniques to uh, allow that code to run on data that's much bigger than GPU memory. And then finally, we'll look at some, some techniques to optimize this code to make it run fast. Uh, so here's a table of um, some simple SQL queries. Um, in the middle column, you can see the uh, so-called physical operator, which is used to implement each of these um, SQL queries. Uh, and on the, uh, the right-hand side, um, you can see uh, the thrust function, which would implement this physical operator. Um, and this is a good illustration of a couple of things. Firstly, the correspondence of um, a lot of SQL queries to very straightforward GPU code. Uh, and secondly, how easy it is to uh, set up some prototype code using a thrust library. So the list of operations on the previous slide um, is a little bit limited for a, uh, a full-featured SQL engine. Here are some examples of some of the more, some more of the operators that you would need to run, need to implement. Um, all of these operators are, are more or less um, uh, as, simple to, as simple to implement as the, um, if we look at this, uh, the last row in this slide, um, we have a sort merge join, which takes more than one thrust call, but it's only a few thrust calls put together, and it's still pretty straightforward. Um, uh, pretty much all of these operators are, are more or less the same, just a few calls for thrust to implement. So what do we do if we want to run on bigger data? Um, uh, the first thing we can do is break the data up into chunks uh, and operate one chunk at a time, load it onto the GPU, process it, and then send it onto the client. Um, uh, for some operations such as sort, we'll need um, to do a little bit more. Um, a simple way of implementing sort, an external sort on the GPU is to take a um, external, external sort routine for the CPU and simply plug the first part into a GPU sort and accelerate it that way. Um, this is an illustration of the chunking idea. In the first row, you can see that we, uh, we're taking a nice small amount of memory, uh, a nice small amount of data, uh, loading onto the GPU, processing it, and then producing the result. Uh, in the second row, we have a, a data side of one terabyte. And um, as far as I know, there are no short-term plans for NVIDIA to implement a GPU with a terabyte of data of memory on it. Um, so it won't fit on the GPU. So in the third row, we can see, nice and simple, we just break up the one terabyte of data into four megabyte chunks and process them one at a time on the GPU. Um, for the other operations, which don't work quite as simply as this, we can use an external sorting algorithm for sort. Uh, and we can use similar, oper similar code for some of the other <laughs> operators. Um, the basic idea with external sort is you'll need to take multiple passes over the data and buffer some of the intermediate results. And this approach will, will, will extend to some of these other operators, um, such as the ones listed here. Uh, Non-index non nested loop join, sort merge join, window functions, distinct aggregates, and outer joins. Um, this is a, a simple illustration of the external sort adapted to the GPU. We take the, we take the terabytes, terabyte of data, um, we sort it four megabytes at a time on the GPU, and then we just plug it into a regular external sort algorithm which runs on the CPU. So if we implement all of this, we're going to have an engine that will run a lot of SQL queries, but it won't be as fast as we'd like, so we need to optimize it a bit. Um, so we're going to go for a few ideas on how to optimize it. Um, the first one is always use good benchmarking and profiling tools. 
Uh, and then there's a list of uh, standard optimization techniques that you would use in any sort of analytic database. And these work more or less the same for a GPU-based database. Um, so these are all good ideas. Uh, and then we're going to follow up some GPU-specific ideas for optimization. The first one is you want to use CUDA-based profiling tools in addition to your regular ones. Otherwise, you're going to be misled about your GPU code. Um, and we have a number of other items which we'll go through in more, in more detail. So the first idea is to use a, a GPU test queue. Um, this is a simple idea where we uh, break our query processing up into tasks, which go into a queue, and then you have a GPU worker thread, which loads tasks from that queue, runs them on the GPU, and then passes them on to the next part of the processing. Um, it's a very simple idea. Um, there are a lot of benefits to this approach. Um, we can use it to uh, uh, implement concurrency within a single query, uh, and this will allow us to overlap kernel execution and PCR transfers, for instance, which will ho help hide some of the latency from the PCR transfers. Um, we can use it to help support running multiple concurrent queries on the same system on a single GPU, um, and by using this queue approach, um, we get a nice property that it's very difficult for one query to starve out another query when we're running them concurrently. Um, and we have a number of other uh, uh, benefits. Um, for instance, we can also very simply extend it to allow one query to run on multiple GPUs on a single system. Um, so here's a, a simple diagram of the idea. You have a, a number of workers running on the machine, on the host. Um, when they have some work ready to do on a GPU, they post that work to a task, task queue. And then you have a number of workers, and what they will do is they will sit there and wait for a GPU to become available, and when one does, they'll take that task, run it on the GPU, and then load the results back to the CPU. Yeah, another idea is to combine your GPU tasks. Um, we're looking at this query, select A, comma B plus C from T, where B is greater than five, order by A. Um, the logical implementation of this query, you can see on the first row, um, we're looking at the middle three. First we do a transform, then we do a remove if, and then we do a sort by. In the naive query plan, which you see on the second row, uh, we transfer the data to the GPU, we run the transform, then we transfer it back to the host, then we transfer it back to the GPU to run the remove if, then back to the host, and then we transfer it back to the GPU to, the, to do the sort by, and then back to the host. Uh, and in the combined version, we can transfer the data to the device, run the transform, then the remove if, then the sort by, all in one go, and then back to the host. Um, by eliminating a lot of these PCI transfers, we can hopefully increase the speed of our query quite a lot. Another idea is to use larger chunks of data. Um, for instance, um, if we're doing a sort, if we need to do an external sort, we need to break the data up into chunks, sort each chunk at a time on the GPU, and then do another merge phase. Now, if we, if we load a small amount of data each time to sort on the GPU to feed into the merge phase, the query will take a certain amount of time. If we try to load as much as possible on the GPU in each of these uh, initial sort, sort uh, steps, um, we'll run a lot faster. Typically, what we want to do is try to create the chunks as big as possible to just fit on the GPU, and that usually gives you the best performance. Um, we can also play with the chunk size in other ways. Um, when we're uh, reading data from the, from the hard disk, um, we want to optimize that stage. Now, if we read a chunk size from the hard disk that will fit onto a GPU, it's going to run well on a GPU, but it's not going to run very good on the hard disk. The hard disk is going to run pretty slowly because we, we, we're doing small reads. Um, if we change the chunk size to be a good size to optimize for the hard disk, those chunks won't fit on the GPU anymore. So all we do is we uh, read the big chunk from the hard disk and then split it into small chunks and then operate on each chunk on the GPU one by one. Um, another thing we can do with rechunking is for some of the operators that we run, um, we input a certain number of rows, and often we get less rows back, sometimes a lot less. And this can happen, for instance, with remove if, join, and reduce by key. Now, if the, if the output from these 
these uh, operators is very small, the next operator is going to get a very small amount of data to run on, and then we're losing performance there. So what we want to do is to put those, put those chunks back together into big chunks. So here's an illustration of the idea. Um, say we have high selectivity on a where query in the first line we see. We take the input, we run the remove if, and maybe it doesn't remove any rows or moves a small number of rows, uh, and then we go to the sort, and the sort runs fast. Um, in the second line, we see with low selectivity, we take the input, we run remove if, and maybe it only leaves 20% of the rows left. Then we're running a sort on chunks which are only 20% full. Uh, we're taking a big performance hit doing that. So in the, first, in the third line, we see a simple solution. After we run, run the remove if, we simply rechunk them back into big chunks, and then we run the sort on the big chunks again. Um, another idea with rechunking is for a join. Um, when we want to do a non-index nested loop join, what we need to do is take the chunks from both the tables, and for every chunk in the first table, we need to loop through all the chunks in the second table um, in order to get the complete result set. Now, if we have a, um, a particular size in the first table, we're going to have a, a certain number of chunks for that first table. Um, if we can change that size, that chunk size, we can loop through the second table less times uh, and in the, uh, the illustration of the numbers here, we can see we can transfer seven times less data to the GPU. In this case, uh, there's an illustration on the next slide to make it a bit clearer. So we see on the, on the left, we've got regular-sized chunks. We've got nine chunks in the big table and three chunks in the small table. We'll go through each chunk, each of the nine chunks, and for each of those chunks, we're going to load one of the chunks from the, uh, the second table. So in this case, in the first, in the, on the left side, we're seeing we're going to loop through nine times, loop through those three chunks nine times. Now on the right-hand side, we've made the, table, the big table chunks big. Now we've only got three chunks there. So we only need to loop through the second table three times. So we, learn, we load um, a third the amount of data. Uh, another good optimization technique is, is to avoid hosted device transfers wherever we can. Um, for instance, in, for a non-index nested loop join, if we can fit a chunk from the big table and the entire small table on the GPU at the same time, then we want to leave the small table on the GPU for the whole join, if we can. Um, another idea is to do with metadata and chunk skipping. If, for instance, a common use case is data will be inserted in order of a timestamp, um, if it's log data or, or, or something along those lines. Uh, in this case, it's trivial for the storage layer to maintain that order in the data that's inserted. Um, and then in a lot of use cases, we see people will take, say, a year's worth of data and do queries on particular days. In that case, we can, we can skip most of the data very easily um, without even loading it from disk, never mind loading it onto the GPU. Um, and then one final technique um, we often find some of our kernels are a little bit slow. Um, in Scream, um, we found three examples of bottlenecks we found across a lot of different queries um, in the reduce by key, in the multi key sort, and in the internals of the join. Uh, in the reduce by key, um, uh, uh, in the reduce by key situation, um, a simple optimization we did early on was to write two code paths. One for chunks where a lot of the keys are unique, and one for chunks where a lot of the keys are si very similar and there's not many unique keys. Um, the sort and the join are a little bit more complicated for, than that. And finally, um, strings. Uh, strings are very difficult to deal with. Firstly, um, matching the uh, performance of compression on the CPU for general data is very difficult for G GPUs. As far as I know, no one's come up with a, uh, a good general GPU compression for typical string data, unless it falls into some very specific patterns. Um, and without the compress good compression, we're losing a lot of performance. Um, our current work around there is to use CPU compression for strings. Uh, another issue with strings is, uh, is the record size can be very big. And then when we're working with big data, obviously we have issues with whether the chunks will fit on the GPU we want to shrink the chunks or maybe just operate on the CPU instead. And there are a few non-specific GPU issues, um, uh, non-big data specific, sorry, GPU issues with strings. 
Uh, for instance, dealing with variable length data is always a bit of a challenge with CUDA. Um, dealing with collations is a problem. Um, uh, collations help us to compare strings correctly and sort them correctly. And uh, dealing with Unicode is also a problem. There's no Unicode libraries that run on a GPU. Um, and we're still looking for good solutions for these issues. So in summary, um, I've shown you a few uh, basic techniques on how to implement a SQL engine on GPUs and a few ideas about how to extend it to big data and optimize it. Well, thank you very much.